Good morning, everybody. Yeah, isn't that nice? <laughs> I'm in the desert, but I got a fire. Actually, it's cold enough this morning to actually warrant it instead of just ambiance. So that's kind of nice. Hi. I love you. Thanks for being here. One more. Another day where we survive. Yay. <laughs> Now, you know me, my production value is for shit, right? But I love you and you love me and that's, good. that's all that matters, right? Let's work together on this. Let's, let's raise the vibration of the world. That's what it's all about, right? We're supposed to raise each other's vibration so we all are involved in the, the great awakening, the, the ascension, or whatever. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Okay. It's early. I've just waken up. I'm, I was jazzed to do these videos. Last night I was thinking about what I would do today, and I'm gonna do two videos today. This is gonna be the first one. It's gonna be on persistence. I love that word. Persistence. And I'm gonna give you a fun little, you know, analogy or story to kind of show you examples of persistence. And then the next video I'll do later will be about mysteries. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we you know shake it up. It doesn't always have to be about the same thing. Besides, I've witnessed some really interesting things on my past year, especially at the Grand Canyon. We'll talk about that in my next video. <clears throat> Anywho, <sighs> okay, let's get the energies aligned. When I was coaching my son's soccer team, which was a blast, by the way, I loved. At first, I, I did it because they didn't have anybody. You know, and I was like, I'd played soccer in the past and I wanted my son to play, so I was more than happy to volunteer. He actually played T ball for a minute and he was just not having any of that. Just sitting in the benches and now he was ready to go, right? So I was like, okay, let's just do soccer. And he took to it like, you know, fish to water, right? Just, you know, I'm not going to say my son was the best player on the team, but probably was. <clears throat> anyway, let's talk about my soccer team. Every year, that I coach soccer literally every season out of all eight seasons, maybe one season when the other coaches were taking a break that I actually got some decent players. I mean, that I'll explain. The Bad News Bears, you gotta watch that movie. That, that would explain my eight years of coaching, except I wasn't a drunk, Walter Matthau. Anyway, <clears throat> I would get, these coaches were dicks. They would literally pick the best kids in the team, uh, in, in the, the town, in our league, and they would give me all the newbies, all the kids that never even kicked a soccer ball before. And their parents just wanted to, you know, exercise, and I was down with it. You know, it was about the kids. It's not about winning for me anyway. And I would get these kids, man, that they, <laughs> literally that didn't even know how to kick a soccer ball. And, and their teams were, you know, dribbling past my guys like it wasn't even funny. And a great example would be one season, and we played against this other team that showed up, and they were huge. It was like playing the East Germans or something, right? 12 to 2 was the final score. And if you understand soccer, you know that's a blowout. That's not even close. And the worst part was their coach was a dick. He was, and put it this way, I almost got into a fight with the players. I wasn't trying to fight them. These little fuckers were so big that they thought that they would whoop my ass. Yeah, East Germans. I don't know what the hell that was going on with that. I was like, dude, the, I, in the, the sad part was obviously their kids were bigger than mine and they were more skilled. And instead of their coach saying, okay, let's just put our, you know, their good guys in the back and, let, you know, that kind of stuff. They, they were creaming us. <clears throat> we didn't get two points until the end of the game. And one of the points they tried to take, their coach went ballistic, said my kid, my kid scored. And he said my kid was off sides, and he wasn't. But this coach, after already having 12 points, went ballistic that my son scored. Demanded that the ref throw, say it was offside. It was, it was horrible. It was a horrible game. I almost got in a fight with the other coach because I told him, dude, are you, what's wrong with you, man? This is not sportsmanship. He was just... I, yeah, I was all I could do to focus on my kids and trying to keep them calm and not want to whoop the guy. Trust me, I really, really, I, and I don't like hurting people, but that dude needed a lesson. He needed a lesson. But the point, the point I'm going to make is the next practice. You got to understand, these kids took a beating. 
morally, physically, and it hurt my heart. And I trust me, I was that weekend was not a good weekend for me because all I could think about was those poor kids, right? And then the following Tuesday came. And every one of those kids showed up. Every one of them. I was like, dude. I was I was in awe. These kids. They had just <laughs> they had just taken such an ass beating from these these German whatever the hell they were. I was just it took me a minute, right? I'm sitting there going, the, the, I was, because I was expecting half of them not to show up. Honestly, the parents were there, and the parents heard about it. Actually, out of the eight years, oh, that's loud. Out of the eight years that I coached, I only had one kid get pulled off my team by his parents, and that was only at the beginning of the season. And the parents simply said to me, "I did not pay for my child to lose." Well, your child's gonna have an interesting life, right? Because life is all about ups and downs, right? And you got it's the, it's like they say the. The winners will never know what the new losers know, right? Losers have more strength than winners can even imagine, especially if you've never lost before. Never had to deal with that loss. So I spent the first 10 minutes of the practice. I made sure they were all gathered and they all showed up. And I looked each of them in the eye and I told them, you guys are fucking amazing. And normally I don't cuss, but these I, here's one of the things that my kids loved about me is I treated them with respect, I treated them as my equals. I didn't treat them as like little kids. I talked to them like they were young men. And at that moment, they were. Now I had nothing but, I was like, dude, I witnessed the, the slaughter and they still showed up. And one of them said, you know what? I just like the practices. I don't care about the games. They just loved the practices, hanging out with me. And I thought that was amazing. So I ended up, after I, told them how awesome they were and how and I told them I was like trust me you'd be surprised how many people grown adults would have walked away and not kept participating in that sport and these kids all showed I said you guys are mighty you guys are amazing that's persistence that is the essence of persistence they weren't done they wanted to, yeah and they like I said I was amazed that they showed up after that ass whooping and I just made that practice as fun as possible. I was like, dude, we're just going to have fun. We're just going to scrimmage. And I'm like, I didn't make them drill. I didn't make them run. I was like, we're just going to have fun. We're just going to play a game. And that's what we did. And it was amazing. I love soccer. It's a really good sport. So no matter what you've gone through, you still got to fight. You still got to get up. You, gotta st you still got to be you. You still got to love yourself. And these kids, man, like I said, amazing. It was it was inspiring. I still get emotional thinking about it because it, it, it was an epic, epic beatdown. And they got up, dusted themselves off, and they kept going. And they were smiling. At the end of that practice, they forgot all about that game. They had a good time. Uh, so sometimes kids can be as inspiring as any adult. So remember that. And love yourself, man, and every time you fall on your ass, you're going to get right back up because you're going to say, you know what, I'm good enough. And I was going to explain about my Emperor of the Universe thing. When I learned to love myself, right, it, that was the point. It was like, you have to love yourself. So I was like, why not swing for the fence? So if I love myself, then I'm going to say I'm the Emperor of the goddamn Universe, right? I mean, what's, what's greater than that, right? <laughs> I don't know. So I was like, yeah, so I'm the emperor of the universe. That's how much I love myself. And that's what that's from. So I'm not, it's not an ego thing or anything. I actually think I'm the emperor of the universe, although that would be freaking awesome. Because trust me, I put a smack down on a few people. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway. So, yeah, persistence. It's inspiring. And I love you. God loves you, and the universe really digs you right now. And we're rooting for you. We want you to get up, dust your ass off, get that high ground, and, and keep it. And do good, because I know you can. Okay. Have a wonderful day. I love you. I know I'm a flirt. Okay, bye.